Okay, today I'm going to be talking about superposition. So for me, superposition didn't really click until I got this type of explanation. In order to describe superposition, I want to talk about electrons. I'm going to pretend that electrons have two specific types of attributes. One is called color, the other is called hardness. So these are actually real attributes, but I'm just not calling them by their real names, so it's not confusing. So I'm just going to call them color and hardness. At the end of the video, I'll tell you what the real attributes are. So all electrons can either be white or black, and for their hardness, they can either be hard or soft. So this has been measured many times over. All electrons have these properties. They're either white or black, and they're either hard or soft. So how do you know whether an electron is white or black? Scientists use an instrument that I'm going to call a color box. So if you send an electron into a color box, there's two holes that it can come out of. Don't worry about how the inside of it works. Just know that these color boxes work very well. There's two holes that the electron can come out of, a white hole or a black hole. Any electron that comes out of the white hole is a white electron. Any electron that comes out of the black hole is a black electron. And just the same as the color box, we can also make a hardness box where we measure the hardness of the electron. There's a soft hole and a hard hole. So if the electron comes out of the soft hole, it's a soft electron. If it comes out of the hard hole, it's a hard electron. And same thing as the color. If you measure soft electrons and send those soft electrons through another hardness box, they will still be soft. Same with the hard electrons. So let's say I do an experiment to see if there's a correlation between color and hardness. So I take a bunch of hard electrons, I know because I just measured them with a the hardness box, and I send all those electrons through a color box, I find that there's no correlation between color and hardness. So 50% of the electrons will be white and 50% of the electrons will be black. I can do this same experiment a different way by taking a bunch of black electrons and sending them through a hardness box and I find that 50% of them are soft and 50% of them are hard. So again, I find that there's absolutely no correlation between color and hardness, meaning that you can't predict the hardness of an electron based on its color. Okay, now here's where it gets interesting. So what if we try to measure both the hardness and the color? We want to know if an electron is hard and black, or white and soft, or whatever combination. So let's say I send a bunch of electrons through a color box. I know that about 50% of them will be white, 50% of them will be black. Then let's say I take those black electrons and then send them through a hardness box. We already know that 50% of those will be hard and 50% of those will be soft. But let's say that I take those then soft electrons and send them back through a color box. What would you guess? You'd guess that they're still black, right? So using real numbers instead of percentages, if I were to put in 800 electrons, I would expect to get very close to 200 electrons out of the last color box on the black hole. But when we actually do the experiment, that's not what happens. We only get 100 electrons out of the last black hole and the other 100 electrons come out of the white hole. So that means that those black electrons actually change to white electrons. So what's happening here is not that we're finding something wrong with our color box, because when we go back and use that same color box, we find that it's working properly. What this is getting at is the fundamental principle called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And basically, with this experiment, it's showing that we cannot measure both the hardness and the color of an electron. Not only can we not measure it, but it actually doesn't even mean anything to say that an electron is both white and hard or black and soft. You simply can't state that it has both a hardness and a color. So we learned that as soon as we measure the color of an electron, it's 50-50 whether that electron is going to be hard or soft. And then as soon as we measure the hardness of an electron, it's 50-50 whether that electron will then be black or white. So let's dig into this a little bit deeper. We're going to create a two-path device. And what this is, is let's say we make a hardness box that changes the path of the hard electrons so that they join the path of the soft electrons. 
Now these mirrors, they don't do anything to the electron besides change the path of the electron. So let's say I repeat the experiment again, except this time I replace the normal hardness box with this two path device hardness box so that the hard electrons combine again in the path of the soft electrons. So before we do the experiment, based on our previous experiments, let's try to guess what we think would happen. So let's say we put in 800 electrons. So that means around 400 of them would be black electrons. And then we send those black electrons through our two path device. But our two path device combines the paths so that we end up sending all of those 400 electrons through the last color box. Of those 400 electrons that went through the last color box, we would expect 50% to be white, 50% to be black based on our previous experiment. So we should end up with around 200 electrons in the last black hole of the color box. But when we do the experiment, once again, we find that we do not get what we are expecting. We find that instead of 200 electrons coming out of the black hole of the last color box, we got 400 electrons. So that means that all of the electrons that went into the last color box were black electrons and zero of them were white. And no matter how long we run this experiment, we find that we never, ever, ever get a white electron coming through the last color box. So at this point, after all our experiments, let's ask a simple question. At the hardness box, which path does an individual electron take? Path one or path two? Well, let's go through the scenarios. So if it took path one, then that means it was a hard electron. And based on our previous experiments, we know that if it's a hard electron, its color statistics should be 50-50, but we find that that's not the case. Likewise, if the electron took path number two, then it was a soft electron and its color statistics should be 50-50, but we find that that's not the case either. Okay, so the electrons, they didn't take path one, they didn't take path two. So the other option is, let's say it somehow took both paths. We can test this though. We can stick a barrier on path one or stick a barrier on path two, and we never get a half of an electron hitting the barrier. We always get a whole individual electron hitting the barrier. So there are never any half electrons that hit the barriers, so we can't say that it took both paths. Okay, so the only option left is to say it took neither path, but we can test this also. Let's say we put a barrier at path one and path two so that no electrons can get through, and sure enough, we find that no electrons come out of the last color box, so we blocked all the electrons. So it didn't take neither path. Okay, at this point, we've exhausted all of our options. We're saying that the electrons, they don't pay, take path number one, they don't take path number two, they don't take both paths, and they don't take neither path. So what or where is the electron when it's going through this hardness box? Scientists had to come up with a new term to describe this type of movement, and they called it superposition. So superposition is a way to describe the movement of particles when it has no real-world equivalent. And the way you use this term is to say that in this two-path hardness device, the electrons are in a superposition of being both hard and soft. If you've taken a chemistry class before, you may have heard of electron orbitals. Electron orbitals may have been explained to you as kind of the electron is somewhere in this cloud around the atom, and you don't really know where it is. It's kind of everywhere all at once. And what the teacher was trying to tell you is that the electron exists in a superposition around the nucleus of the atom. So there is no real world position of the electron. It's in a superposition. And you don't know where the actual electron is unless you measure it. What's weird about these experiments is that it's saying that all particles exist in a superposition until they're measured. That means when we're not measuring something, it doesn't even have a real world equivalent for its position. We don't even know where it is. We can't even describe it. All right, thanks for listening to all of this hard stuff. If you are wondering what the color and the hardness represented, it actually represents the spin of the electron in two different axes. If you haven't subscribed yet, remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time.